this has been a week of uh, deliverance for you hain aakhri lecture sare is hafte mein khatam ho rahe hain na sab courses khatam ho rahe hain sab kaam khatam ho raha hai so this is the last lecture and in this last lecture we would uh, cover <coughs> a few remaining things in the last lecture i talked of uh, statistical methods in thermodynamics <coughs> and uh, we solved an example an example of a harmonic oscillator or a collection of harmonic oscillators the model that einstein used for calculating heat capacity of solids or of a crystal uh, <coughs> we um, it was a very simple example of applica of uh, the application of uh, <coughs> statistical methods uh, we will take another very simple example of um this application um example 2 that of a spin half paramagnet now you know that uh, um individual atoms have magnetic moments on them and um, the magnetic moments on them um are a result of uh, angular momentum of particles uh, especially electrons and this angular momentum of electrons gives rise to a magnetic moment mu a vector quantity which is uh, related to angular momentum which we call spin s as a vector quantity <clears throat> and this gives rise to the individual magnetic moment of atoms magnetic moments of individual atoms and then all together they give rise to the magnetic to two magnetic properties of substances paramagnets are substances which are uh do not have um a uh, net magnetization in the absence of of an external magnetic field but when an external magnetic field is applied all the individual moments try and align themselves these paramagnets are the quantities that are the materials that you use in electromagnets in the electromagnets you have a substance in a paramagnetic state in which individual atoms have magnetic moments but all these magnetic moments are completely randomly oriented so that the total net magnetic moment is zero and when you apply magnetic field they all align and give rise to magnetic moment this is how this, this is the material that is used in uh, electromagnets we say spin half so a spin half system if suppose there is an atom which has a net orbital angular momentum with a value equal to half it will be called a spin half system and this spin half system will have only two possible orientations <coughs> one 
of uh, uh, atomic magnetic moments. There will be only two possible moments. Um, usually, <clears throat> and these would be, we call them up and down. Up and down in relation to an external magnetic field. Um, external magnetic field H. So you apply magnetic field in this direction, then the spin that aligns itself along the field is called an up spin, and the spin that aligns itself opposite to the field is called the down spin. So we have therefore this 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 has therefore only two possible states. And we call these states up spin states and down spin states. Okay? Just two, two possible states. The up spin states will have an energy epsilon up, which will be equal to minus mu times h. This one will have the energy uh, E down, epsilon down, which will be equal to plus mu h. And uh, similarly, the magnetic moment mu up, uh, <clears throat> mu up, has the value uh, we call plus mu and the magnetic moment of the state down when the, when the particle is in state down is uh, called minus mu. Okay? This defines the system. The states, the energies, the magnetic moments. All these things are defined. So let us take N such atoms <clears throat> okay um, <clears throat> um, before before we take n such atoms let me let me say the probability p up of finding a particle in this state up will be equal to uh, C times exponential of uh, this energy minus beta mu h minus beta and this energy epsilon up which will be equal to C times exponential of plus beta mu h and p down would be equal to c times exponential of minus beta epsilon down because it has an energy epsilon down and this will be equal to c times exponential of minus beta mu h <clears throat> all just follows after you've defined your states, single particle states and their energies. Okay? All very clear, right? No, no problem. <coughs> Pointed bracket. Ah! Oh, acha. Acha. Yeah. हाँ ये ये फिजिसिस का तरीका है स्टेट लिखने का है तो अब 
चले बाकी लोगों को भी मालूम हो जाए तो क्या हर्ज है सो द फिजिस एक्चुअली राइट स्टेट एज ए ओके एंड दे एक्चुअली राइट स्टेट एंड दे इज ए डिफरेंट अनदर स्टेट अनदर वे ऑफ राइटिंग इट इज ऑल्सो दे एज यू नो द अदर वे राउंड and uh, often when you write them in this manner then you say actually you have a bracket and then you um divide into two parts you will write this as bra and you will write this as cat so you say bra vector and cat vector bra state or cat state okay and uh, that is what uh, uh uh is normally written in physics and i said these are states up spin state and down spin state okay so a, a bracket is convert a bracket is converted into bra and cat states okay uh <clears throat> so don't worry too much about that that is only a question of um, okay now that we have this we might like to um the probabilities must all add up to 1 okay so p up plus p down must be equal to 1 and therefore this is equal to c times exponential of beta mu h plus exponential of minus beta mu h and this defines c c becomes equal to 1 over exponential of beta mu h plus exponential of minus beta mu h and that if get that defines the probability of functions p up therefore is equal to exponential of beta mu h divided by exponential of beta mu h plus exponential of minus beta u h and p down will be similarly with only numerator being exponential of minus beta mu h and denominator being the same okay so the probability functions get completely defined over here okay what is the partition what is what is the partition function for this partition function is summation over r exponential of minus beta epsilon r this is partition function and uh, there are r is all possible states sum over all possible states there are only two states there was some summation over two states only and that is exponential of minus beta epsilon up plus exponential of minus beta epsilon down which will be equal to exponential of beta mu h minus plus exponential of minus beta mu h which is actually what has gone into the denominator of the probability function so z is known partition function is there you can calculate um various quantities this partition function if you like you can always if you like you don't have to but you can write it as two two times 
cosine hyperbolic of uh, beta mu h. Now, with partition, partition function given, you know that <coughs> the internal energy U is minus d by d beta of log of partition function. Okay? But now that we know partition function, we should be able to work out all thermodynamics of this system. So, the first step is calculating internal energy. Internal energy is minus d by d beta of log z and we can do this calculation minus d by d beta of log of exponential of beta mu h plus exponential of minus beta mu h and this will be equal to minus this minus and then d by d beta of log means that you have 1 over exponential of beta mu h plus exponential of minus beta mu h and then you start differentiating the quantity in the bracket the first term is exponential of beta mu h the differential of exponential is exponential and then the exponent d by d beta of this exponent will give you mu times h and then plus differential this differentiate this quantity which is exponential of minus beta mu h times now differentiate the exponent which is minus beta mu h differentiate respect to beta minus mu h <coughs> all right so uh, I'm doing this in detail for 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 um, basically because we have plenty of time to do all these things and now I can write this as minus and I can take a mu times h common and then what I have is exponential of beta mu h minus exponential of minus beta mu h divided by exponential of plus beta mu h plus exponential of minus beta mu h. All right? All very simple. And I can write this as minus mu h times tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h. I can write this as tangent hyperbolic. Okay, this is tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h. So, internal energy is minus mu h times tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h. And um, I can write down, um, I didn't actually uh, write it in my notes, but I can go back and quickly um, remind you that we wrote um, this um, um, entropy to be equal to um, <coughs> Recall, entropy is given as, this S is not the spin, the spin was with a vector sign S on top, this is entropy. Entropy uh, is equal to uh, K times log Z plus beta times U or you know, you can always. Um, your log z is given by this quantity, 
and beta u is given by that. So this is k times exponential of this. I can write as 2 cosine hyperbolic of beta mu h log z. Log z is log of this, sorry. Log of 2 cosine hyperbolic of beta mu h log z and then plus beta times minus beta mu h times tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h. This is entropy. I could also write down the free energy F as uh, minus 1 over beta times log z. I can write it down as, you know, um, k over beta is uh, k squared t and um, uh, this will be times all of this um, minus k squared t times log of 2 cosine hyperbolic of beta mu h. I can, you know, all of these relations I could <coughs> there is no specific mention of uh, um, um, <coughs> volume so we cannot find pressure in it. I don't think in a magnet one should try to find pressure but we can apart from these we can go back to calculate from this internal energy, one can go back to calculate heat capacity. Heat capacity is minus 1 over kT squared times d by d beta of u. And I leave it to you as a matter of exercise to confirm that this comes out to be K, the Boltzmann constant, times beta mu h whole squared times secant squared of beta mu h. Does the secant squared go against secant hyperbolic? Secant hyperbolic squared. Sometimes people call it secant. You know? So, uh, Tan hyperbolic, they call it tanch. Uh, not anybody from our part of the world, but even in England and America, people just give them names like kosh, not cosine hyperbolic, but kosh. And sine hyperbolic, shine, they will say. Okay? So shine, kosh, tanch, koth, etc., etc., etc. So I think I, so it's she can all right, good. Uh, so this is secant squared of this. Okay, now all of this is simply coming up in terms of these numbers. Let us try and pictureize what this would look like. We have therefore over here in heat capacity beta mu h is uh, mu h over k times t. Magnetic energy divided by thermal energy. And this can be a quantity, let us call it x. Let us call it x and we can try and see uh, two limits. Again, x being much less than 1 or x being much larger than 1. <coughs> okay? 
x being small or x being large. So in the in the x small regime, um, she can x is uh, 2 over exponential of x plus exponential of minus x. This is how she can x is defined, right? And um, so in the limit of x being very small, exponential of x plus exponential of minus x, for small x, how should it be? Because x is small and exponential is an expansion, so we should expand this in x and ignore higher powers of x. That will be perfectly valid. So exponential of x will be equal to 1 plus x plus x square over 2 factorial plus all of those terms. And exponential of minus x will be equal to 1 minus x plus x square over 2 factorial minus the next term and so on. And therefore, exponential of x uh, plus exponential of minus x will be equal to, uh, when we add them up, these terms cancel out and we are left with only quadratic. So we will actually then take quadratic terms and ignore everything beyond quadratic, okay, in the expansion. So it will be 2 plus x squared. And I will therefore write over here approximately equal to 2 plus x squared. <laughs> Okay, and uh, then I have uh, no. This is this is only um, part of the job done. We need to calculate secant x. Secant x is two over exponential of x plus exponential of minus x. So this is equal to two over. 2 plus x squared, which is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared over 2. All right? And then I say, okay, 1 plus 1 over, this is equal to 1 plus x squared over 2 to the power minus 1. And again, something which I can expand binomially. And I will expand only up to powers of x squared. And that is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2. OK? 1 minus x squared over 2. So secant x is equal to this. And we need secant squared x. So secant squared x is therefore approximately 1 minus x squared over 2 whole squared, which will be equal to approximately, we will again ignore every term beyond x squared, and that will be equal to 1 minus x squared. Okay? So in the limit of small x, we find that secant squared x is equal to nearly 1 minus x squared. And we have, what we have CV, in CV is some constant multiplied by x squared times secant squared x. Okay? Which means that this is approximately x squared times 1 minus x squared. And since, and to be consistent with our approximation, uh, not to include anything beyond the quadratic power of x, we will write this as x squared. Okay? So, secant squared, x squared times secant squared x is simply x squared. 
Okay? So, uh, if we were to plot beta mu h, mu h over kt on this side and, and heat capacity on this side, then for small values of mu h over kt, small values of beta mu h, it will be quadratical. It will be quadratic. Okay? In one limit we saw that it is going to be quadratic. We now go to the second limit. X being much larger than 1. When x is much larger than 1, then exponential of x plus exponential of minus x is actually, you know, exponential of minus x, x, x is going to be very small, nearly 0. So it will be approximately equal to exponential of x. Because for large, we, as we said, exponential of, exponential of uh, uh, minus x uh, as a function of x goes down very rapidly. So it becomes very small for, for, for large values of x. So this is going to be nearly 0 and exponential of x. This is exponential of x. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we therefore have, um, uh, where are we? Secant x, therefore, is 2 times exponential of minus x. 2 over exponential of x, which is 2 times exponential of minus x. And x squared times she can oh, oh, sorry, let me, let me then say she can squared x, therefore, is equal to 4 times exponential of minus 2x. Okay? She can squared x. And therefore, x squared times uh, she can squared of x is uh, approximately 4x squared times exponential of minus 2x. Now, when x becomes very large, x square becomes large, but exponential of minus 2x becomes very small, <clears throat> and it is a question of which thing goes faster uh, between the two. The exponential decays faster then the rising x to the power 2 because exponential has all the powers of x in it x to the power 2 x to the power 4 x to the power 6 x to the power 7 8 etc etc so it has all those powers of x and therefore this is going to be to grow uh, to to decay faster than this and therefore this function is going to decay to zero as x uh, goes to infinity, let us say, or larger. For large values of x, this is going to be a decaying function. And here we are then, we can see that the heat capacity is going to be such that it is going to be uh, a decaying function like this for large values of x. And we only have to combine the two and it will be some function like this. So heat capacity of a spin half paramagnet um, as a function of mu h over kt goes like this. Okay?
How about magnetic moment? <coughs> magnetization, in fact. Can we calculate magnetization? <clears throat> Magnetization M will be taken as a total number of atoms N that we have taken multiplied by average magnetic moment mu. average magnetic moment mu. And what is average magnetic moment mu? Average magnetic moment mu is um, summation over mu i times p i sum over i. Like any average is written. This is the way averages are written. So this is like average. But this is actually simple because there are only two possible states. So it is mu up p up plus mu down p down. <coughs> and um, mu up we said was equal to uh, mu up we said was equal to plus mu and mu down was equal to minus mu both of them have the same value except the sign is different so it is equal to mu times p up minus p down. <clears throat> All right. And uh, this we can again quickly add here mu times p up minus p down, we have expressions over here and therefore this is equal to exponential of beta mu h minus exponential of minus beta mu h divided by exponential of beta mu h plus exponential of minus beta mu h. Alright? p up and p down substituted from the very first board or the last bit that we have over there, the, 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 the left hand corner in the lower board. Okay? And therefore this is equal to mu times tangent hyperbolic or tanch, if you don't mind, eh? as the as the British people would say, tanch beta mu h. Okay? <clears throat> so mu bar is equal to this. In fact, in fact, um, internal energy is all due to magnetization and internal energy is actually minus mu bar in the presence of magnetic field. Because energy is only magnetic energy. It is mu times h. Like epsilon up and epsilon down were uh, minus mu times h and plus mu times h. So if you want to calculate total energy it will be the average of that and that average will be equal to minus mu bar times h. Okay? And that happens to be exactly what we found earlier minus mu h times tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h. This is what we had uh, over there too. Here. Okay. Mu h has the dimension of energy. Beta mu h is dimensionless. And it is because it is dimensionless, it can appear as argument in trigonometric functions. 
because geometric functions are expansions. And the argument of functions which have expansions have to be dimensionless. OK, so this, uh, this was, but this was not m. Total magnetization, as we said, is n times mu bar. So m is uh, simply equal to um, <clears throat> um, m is uh, <clears throat> n times mu times tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h. <clears throat> How does tangent function look? Tangent hyperbolic function. Tangent hyperbolic function actually has a simple look. Uh, if this is x and tangent hyperbolic of x is something which sort of uh, goes like this on this side and goes like this on this side. It is, it is sort of anti-symmetric in plus and minus x and it sort of saturates to a value after some time and it is linear for very small values of x for small values of x. This is how this looks. In fact, if you do not, if you want, you can again do the same kind of expansions for uh, tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h or ten, ten, ten hyperbolic of x as I did for uh, x squared times secant squared x. The same kind of expansions you can do and you can check that for very small values of x this function is linear in x, and for very large values of x, this is constant. And this constant is, this value is at 1. Or minus 1 over here. <coughs> All right, so this is uh, the, this is uh, how it goes. And um, if you know magnetization, if you know magnetization, then um, from here, um, <clears throat> for small values of x, this is linear. Uh, for uh, okay, again, uh, beta mu h is mu h over k bar t. So now again we look at low temperature and high temperature limits. Um, low temperature limit is when low temperature limit is when t is small. So mu h over kt, mu h is much larger than kt. And high temperature limit is when mu h is very small compared to kt. These are the two limits, high temperature limit and low temperature limit. And in the low temperature limit, when mu h over kt is um, very, uh, okay, where am I? In the uh, small x regime, I am in the, yeah. Um, so in the small x regime, um, in the high, okay, in this particular regime, as we said, um, uh, tangent of tangent um, hyperbolic of x um, x going to, I'm, I'm sort of trying to, now I'm calling this x and calling this x, this quantity is x being much larger than 1 and this being x much smaller than 1, okay? So low temperature limit is x much larger than 1 
and high temperature limit is x much smaller than 1. And in the low temperature limit, x much larger than 1, our tangent hyperbolic of x is actually approximately equal to 1. If it is equal to 1, then magnetization M is equal to N times capital N times this uh, mu. In the low temperature limit, uh, where the temperatures are very low and atoms are uh, don't have very much much thermal agitation to move them around to 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 cause any any uh, loss of orientation for them. So in that case, um, the smallest amount of magnetic field will cause complete alignment of magnetic moments. And when the small amount of magnetic, even, even the smallest fields can align all magnetic moments, then magnetization is actually saturation magnetization. So this is saturation magnetization. And when x is much smaller than 1, then that is the high temperature limit. In the high temperature limit, we just noted that x much less than 1, tangent x is approximately x is nearly equal to x. And therefore, magnetization is equal to n times mu squared times h divided by k times t. Okay? Tangent hyperbolic of beta mu h will become beta mu h, which is mu h over kt, to n times mu times that will give you this. So magnetization becomes proportional to h. And uh, magnetization divided by h is called is called susceptibility, magnetic susceptibility. It is a response function. Magnetization divided by H. You give it the name chi. Magnetization divided by susceptibility and that is equal to N times mu squared over K times T. Okay? And this formula was worked out by uh, Mr. Curie, the husband of Madame Curie, who also uh, was a brilliant physicist, and, uh, but who worked in this area, not in nuclear physics. And he called it a constant over T susceptibility, he said, of a spin half paramagnet is going to be, or any paramagnet, actually, is going to be inversely proportional to temperature. So this is called Curie law. And C is called Curie constant. Which is a characteristic of substances. Susceptibility is uh, proportional to, inversely proportional to temperature. As temperature rises, susceptibility uh, decreases. All right. Fine. So the, the, these were the two examples that um, had come to my mind, and I thought these would be nice examples. One was of harmonic oscillators. The other one was, is of this, um, a paramagnet, a spin half paramagnet. And in, uh, when you do statistical mechanics, you will 
learn many, many more examples. But before I actually wind up, I want to give you a very brief overview of what is called a uh, uh, a, a typology of uh, um, statistical systems. Very brief overview without going into uh, much mathematics, but only giving you the kind of uh, types that, types of systems that exist in nature, which can be differentiated from each other um, on the basis of the different statistics that they obey. Uh, so the, this is actually a typology or classification, if you like, classification of systems on the basis of the statistics that they follow. Okay? This is uh, what I intend to do on this board over here. Or maybe uh, uh, I, will, I will initially, okay, it is, this first classification is in terms of system being either classical or quantum mechanical. First classification is on the basis of classical or quantum mechanical. The classical systems are described or given by uh, statistics called uh, Boltzmann statistics. Boltzmann has been uh, among the most important persons giving shape to statistical mechanics. There was of course Gauss and there was of course uh, Maxwell and uh, there were many others, um, Kelvin and so on, but uh, uh, Boltzmann was among the most important persons to give it total shape. Among the quantum, quantum statistical mechanics, quantum mechanical systems, we have, we have classifications according to um, no conservation of particles, and conservation of particles <sighs> by this we mean that conservation of particles by this we mean that if there are n number of particles in state r then you sum over all all the states the total number should be equal to capital n total number of particles. You should be able to count all the particles in all possible states and end up with the total number of particles of the system. Okay? And non-conservation of particles means that this thing doesn't apply over there. Which means actually the particles can be continuously created and destroyed in the process. Their number may not remain conserved. And that is uh, particles uh, being continuously created and uh, destroyed, absorbed, or whatever, this applies to applies to uh, photons, light particles. You know, light particles can be continuously absorbed and created. Um, 
you can't define a system in which you can say here there are n number of particles, n number of photons in x number of states and if I count um, uh, part number of particles in each state the total number will come out to be n. No, that will not happen because the total number n is not conserved. So applies to photons and other excitations. Usually excitations. Excitations are of various kinds and I can start counting the, uh, you know, the, the, the names of excitations that exist in systems. Whenever they, you have a many particle systems, all particles start together uh, behave in a, in, in, in a, a uniform way and there are collective excitations. So for example, when atoms vibrate in solids, then that vibration is a quantized vibration this is called phonon okay when spins uh, oscillate or uh, move around and they make a whole pattern of a wave that is called a magnon then there are excitons and polaritons and polarons and I don't know all of these things these are all excitations that exist in solid systems all of them have the property that you do not have the numbers conserved and therefore this is the kind this is a different class of statistics and this is called Planck statistics you read in your uh, um, uh, course on modern physics how important Planck's contribution was to uh, statistical mechanics and to study of photons and to the initiation of quantum mechanics, right? Uh, and actually Planck studied the st statistics of such particles, especially photons, and um, derived some results for them. For these particles, there are of two different kinds. There are those which can be um, um, any number of particles allowed to occupy a state and here only either zero or one particle allowed to occupy a state. Occupy a single particle state. very important classification in quantum mechanics. A very important classification because these particles in which all of them could be in one state or half of them in one state, half of them in the other, in another state <coughs> or one in each state of, no, there is absolutely no restriction on, on, uh, on uh, um, how many particles can occupy a single particle state but total number should be n. That total number should be specified. These particles are given by Bose-Einstein statistics. Oops, I can't write over here. So, I will write over here. Bose-Einstein statistics. Bose was uh, um, S. N. Bose of Dhaka University, who was um, a great physicist. Uh, he was sitting and he used to he used to 
he sent his paper on working out this statistics to Albert Einstein. And uh, Einstein then, in fact, this, they, had, they had conversed earlier when Einstein had visited uh, India and had visited uh, Calcutta. Um, so Bose and Einstein had already met. So Einstein, Bose sent his paper to Einstein and Einstein found some important corrections to be made. And they published one after the other, though these papers were published one after the other. The total statistics is called both Einstein statistics, but the particles which satisfy these statistics are called bosons. Not with Bose Einstein ons, no, bosons. Okay? So, uh, Indian uh, name boson, Bose, lives on in physics forever as a boson. Um, particles are, you know, Bose particles. They are called Bose particles or bosons. Okay? This statistics is terribly important in quantum mechanics because this statistics come about when the wave, total wave function of the particle is anti-symmetric. When the total wave function of the particle is anti-symmetric, then only one particle in occupy a state. Uh, either it, it remains unoccupied or only one particle can occupy a state. And these, these, uh, this statistics was worked out by Fermi and Dirac statistics. And the particles are called fermions. So electrons are fermions. And not just electrons, but many other particles are also called also fermions. All those particles which have spin half. Spin half particles. Spin half knee. It's been half integer spin particles, okay? Half integer spin particles. Particles will spin half or three half or five half or seven half. Those will be uh, particles whose wave functions will be anti-symmetric and that will impose this condition on them that they will not be able to uh, be together in a, sing, in a more than one in a state. They are exclusive. They, they exclude each other. Okay. Uh, Pauli's exclusion principle applies to them. A very famous exclusion principle. Pauli's exclusion principle applies to them. Um, so these are fermions, half inch spin particles. Okay. So this is a. This is a typology or classification of statistical systems. You have classical systems given by the Boltzmann statistics or quantum mechanical <coughs> systems of three different kinds. The difference, first difference is in terms of whether this condition is satisfied here or not. In fact, in this case also, this condition is satisfied the total number is conserved. It is only in the case of Planck statistics that this condition is not satisfied, where number is not, total number is not conserved. In the other cases, um, the difference is in how many particles can occupy a single particle state. And the, so uh, rather than give you formulae for them, which you will not be uh, able to use or remember, I will leave it here just uh, to, to, to keep this with you as a reminder whenever you come uh, to, to see these terms or these numbers that there is something called um, a classification of statistical systems. And I guess uh, there is no problem if I can now we have a little bit of chat. Uh, and we say that, okay, day of deliverance, finally, things are getting coming, coming to an end. So, uh, how has it been? Uh, any questions for today, from today's lecture? 
Any questions from today's lecture? Sorry, what happened? Final ki percentage. Final ki percentage? Abhi to final hua hi nahi. Abhi to final hua hi nahi. Uh, uh, kitna 45 hai? Kitna hai? 45 hai? 45 hai bhai. Nahi? Kitna hona chahiye? Ziyada hai? Ziyada hai bhoat ya? Achha. Aad... Chale 44 kar lete. Kya? ठीक है 44.5 कर लेंगे भाई मेरी रेकमेंडेशन फॉर्मूला शीट फॉर्मूला शीट तब दिस इज अ वेरी ट्रिकी क्वेश्चन 